Nordonia. I'm Joe Clark, the superintendent of the Nordonia Schools, and today I'm at Spinato's Restaurant with the Nordonia Chamber of Commerce uh, here to give my State of the Schools address. So, welcome everybody and uh, good afternoon. Two years ago, I stood before you giving this very same State of the Schools speech, and I told you that we are in a state of remission. I was just finishing my first year as superintendent, and we were coming out of a period of near financial disaster. We had reduced our staff by more than 100 employees. We eliminated several key administrative positions, and we were entering another year of wage freezes. Last year, I told you that our hard work paid off. Last year, I told you that the Nordonia schools were the strongest they had ever been, that our student achievement was the highest it had ever been, and we were operating as efficiently as we ever had. Well, this year, we're even better. Every year, the Ohio Department of Education releases local report cards to quantify how well school districts rank in a variety of measures. These include scores on achievement tests for students in grades 3 through 10, graduation rate, attendance rate, and achievement for students in a variety of subgroups, such as minority students, students in poverty, uh, students with disabilities. The report card also measures um, things like value added which shows how much growth our students uh, have over the course of one year. Now the Ohio Department of Education rating system is in a flux. They're transitioning from the old system you're familiar with, the excellent with distinction, excellent continuous improvement, etc., to a new system whereby we receive actual letter grades for a variety of measures. What I can tell you is this, if the system did not change, the Nordonia schools would once again be excellent with distinction having earned our highest performance index ever, and again being above value added, meaning that our students learn more than a year's worth of material in one year's time. Using the state's new rating system, we still had our highest performance index ever, and we were still above value added. In fact, our grades on this year's report card are even better than our grades were last year, and they place us as the third highest performing district in Summit County higher than Twinsburg, higher than Revere, higher than Green. Let, re let me repeat that. Of 17 school districts in Summit County, we have the third highest performance, and we do that with the second lowest tax rate in the county. But the truth is, in my six years in the school district, I've only received a handful of phone calls from people with questions about our state report card. The truth is, most people really don't care about the state report card. What they care about is all those things that the report card doesn't measure. Is my child having a good time at school? Does he have things to do? Is he being treated well? Is he safe? We know from the state report card that we're doing outstanding things academically. But this year we wanted to show the community all the other great stuff we do. So we published our first quality profile. The quality profile examines the elements of a high quality public education not necessarily measured by standardized tests. Its content is divided into six categories. Academics, arts, uh, student leadership and activities, fiscal stewardship, parent and community involvement, and student services. This expanded report describes the programs and successes of our school system. Copies of the quality profile are at your table. And I'd like to actually point out a few highlights to you if you would like to grab one, just a few things. On page two, starting with academics, you might not have known, but did you know that Nordonia High School was awarded, um, uh, was given awards by both U.S. News and World Report and Newsweek Magazine last year? Did you know that nearly $7.6 million in scholarships was earned by our uh, graduating class this past year? If you skip ahead, the page four, under the arts. Do you know that our arts students alone receive more than a quarter of a million dollars in scholarships to attend colleges in arts-based um, majors? A quarter of a million dollars for those students. On page five, under student leadership and activities, did you know that in last school year, 688 students filled the rosters of 25 different interscholastic sports at Nordonia High School? That's almost half of the student body was on a roster last year. On page six, under fiscal stewardship, I don't know if you knew this, our district treasurer, Karen Obertill, she won a prestigious Auditor of State Award for her clean financial audit. On page seven, you'll see at the top that 
we um, refinanced some bonds last year. What does that mean for the district? It means that we're going to save taxpayers about half a million dollars over the next 10 years, over the life of those bonds. We also installed energy efficient lighting um, in all of our buildings, and that's going to save the district about $50,000 a year. Uh, under parent and community involvement, our Nordonia uh, boosters are always very generous, and our Band-Aids last year purchased new uniforms for the band, valued at $68,000, not a penny coming from tax dollars. Um, Nordonia last year, in conjunction with PTA Council, held its second annual Winter Art and Music Festival. If you haven't been to that, you want to get to it. It's a fabulous day in December where every performing group in the district uh, performs, and there's a fantastic art show. And the world's most handsome Santa Claus is there also, by the way. Do you know the date? I do know the date. It's in my phone. Okay. Jeff, sorry. It's the second Saturday in, Jan in December. Uh, one of the programs that I'm most proud about with uh, parent and community involvement is the Knights Caring for Knights program. You might have heard of this. The Bruno family, um, a couple of students and her mother and their mother started a program where we feed hungry kids on the weekend. We provide food for them to take home on the weekend. Started by two students and their mom out of concern for their classmates. So that's our quality profile. You have copies, you're welcome to take them with you, but this is the kind of stuff people care about. I don't get questions about report cards, I get questions about these kinds of things. Nordonia is a fabulous district, a great place for um, people to raise kids, and a great place for you to send your kids to school. Now, safety does continue to be a priority of the Nordonia schools as well. This summer, we completed several projects to enhance the safety and security of our buildings. Uh, PA speaker additions were added throughout Lee Eaton, which gives the administration now the ability to broadcast messages to students outside during recess in the case of the emergencies. There were nine new cameras installed across the district buildings, and we also installed cameras at our transportation facility. Additional access control locks were installed on various stores at the high school, and new signage was installed to aid our first responders in case of an emergency. In addition to security enhancements, some regular maintenance and improvements took place. The roof replacement in Northfield covered 7,400 square feet as part of our, our roof maintenance cycle. In addition, we had a water meter fire line repaired at Northfield, and we did asphalt patching and replacement uh, and sealing and some concrete repair at all of our buildings. Uh, as I mentioned with our quality profile, we did that, that House Bill 264 project, which put more efficient lighting in all of our, all of our district's buildings. Uh, we wrapped it up this past summer, um, adding lighting at the uh, North Donia High School kitchen, and there's LED pole lights installed in the back parking lot at the high school. So if you go to those football games or basketball games and you're there late at night, you're really going to notice a difference. It's a lot safer and a lot brighter, and it actually saves us money to operate those lights. I don't know if you knew this. You know, students who speak English as a second language continue to move to Nordonia. Did you know that we educate nearly 90 students that do not speak English or who have very limited English uh, proficiency? That's almost tripled since 2010. Students are being educated in Nordonia schools that speak, get these languages, Cantonese, Gujarati, Punjabi, Russian, Bengali, Tagalog, Chavacano, and Telugu. 90 students. We're not talking kids who are speaking Spanish. These are kids coming from all over the world, and it's tripled in the last three years. So we're continually upgrading our program to meet these students' needs each year. Now, transportation continues to be the, the hot issue here in the community. It's a concern for the community. It is for me also, and it is for the school board. We continue to analyze options for returning transportation and we want to do it intelligently. We never want to be in the situation again where we have to cut busing again. As you know, when a school district uh, cancels busing, it causes a lot of uproar and a lot of distrust in the community. So before we bring it back, we want to make sure it's sustainable. In any circumstance, the logistics of returning transportation won't allow it to happen until the start of next school year at the earliest. That's why the school board right now is talking about what are our options to start returning transportation. Hopefully, you'll see some movement in the next few months about what our options are. One thing that I hope has been very evident to you in my tenure as superintendent is our focus on communications. Every principal in the district and I have a presence on Twitter, and we all carry smartphones with us um, everywhere we go. So if you're a parent and you have a question or a concern, we're going to respond to you within hours, if not within minutes. 
We do have a new community service graduation requirement in place, and it's implemented for the class of 2017, this year's sophomores. We believe that community service not only provides services to those people and organizations in the community that need it, but also that community service provides a real advantage to our students in three ways. It teaches them tangible life skills, it provides them a competitive advantage for admissions to colleges, and it provides a competitive advantage to them for scholarships. To date, the class of 2017 has already completed more than 2,500 hours of community service. Financially, the district is stable. You remember that the last levy passed in November of 2011, and it was enough to stop our bleeding and prevent us from being taken over by the state. Through maintaining a tight belt, we've managed to stretch that levy to this point. Now, as you know, school revenue is generally flat, while expenses continue to rise. Through sound fiscal management, we've extended the time frame in which we expect our lines to cross to the fiscal year 2016. That means that we don't expect our expenses to be more than our revenue for a year later than what we thought last fall. Also, our forecast, which goes through 2018, does not project an annual deficit, period. Now, you need to remember, these predictions are part of a forecast that has many unknowns particularly with the constant fluctuations in state funding. We'll continue to be fiscally conservative uh, to extend the life of the 2011 operations levy as far as we can. But I can tell you with confidence that we're as financially stable as we have been in a long time. I can also tell you this, our, our um, next five-year forecast will be adopted by the board at its October 27th board meeting. The treasurer is currently working on that five-year forecast. I have not seen it yet, but again, we've been um, very conservative and it looks like it's going to be um, a pretty strong forecast. You may also remember that we had a permanent improvement levy that expired in 2011. Permanent improvement levies are different from operating levies. Permanent improvement levies can only be used for improvements to facilities or equipment that have a lifespan of more than five years, like roofs, parking lots, textbooks, and computers. Now, because our permanent improvement levy expired, that roof at Northfield that we put on this year had to be general fund expenditures, right? So we don't have a current permanent improvement levy. Permanent improvement money cannot be used for uh, salaries or benefits. So since we've exhausted that permanent improvement money um, from the levy that expired in 2011, you should not be surprised to see a small permanent improvement levy on the ballot sometimes in, sometime in the future. I said that exact same sentence a year ago, and we haven't had a permanent improvement levy. So I'm telling you again, don't be surprised if sometime in the future there's a PI levy on the ballot. So things like roofs and textbooks and computers, we can pay out of the PI money instead of taking it from the general fund, which will do what? It'll allow that 2011 a levy to extend even longer. As I wrap up, let me repeat that the Nordonia schools have never been stronger. This is due to the fabulous people we have working here. We have the best teaching staff I have ever been associated with. We have the best administrative team I've ever worked with. In fact, for the first time in my six years in Nordonia, we've not had any administrative turnover this year. I can't stress enough how important consistency and leadership is in allowing us to maintain the positive momentum we have and providing what I believe to be the best education in Summit County. Mordonia Chamber of Commerce, you guys have a lot to be proud of with your schools, um, and I thank you for your continued support. Thank you. And the band just got grand champion.